Good afternoon, Gettysburg. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jared Herr. And I'm Yanni Tasso. And you are watching The Warrior Wire. Now, Jared. Yanni. It's been a long time it's since we've been here. It's been a little here. while. We it's got canceled last week, some freezing rain that might make the buses crash. So we had a half day. And then before that, we had the Christmas break that yes. took place. Yep. Literally, it's been almost a month. Hopefully, the viewers remembered us and they're excited to see us today. Yes. It's great to be back, uh, providing the week that was in Gettysburg High School. And to start things off, there was a pretty special event that happened yesterday. The adaptive learning class here at the high school received some medals for completing a half marathon over the course of the uh, semester in their gym class with Mr. Dudash. And our correspondents, Mia um, Riggle and Sydney Davis, got to sit down with them and talk about um, that experience. So let's take a look at this week's student spotlight. <laughs> did something with virtual races. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, during my Mod 2 adaptive phys ed class, um, the kids were working hard. We ran a mile. Wednesday was mile day. And since the beginning of the year, we've run probably 15, 20 miles. And I was looking for a way to reward them. Yeah. And um, so I got to talking to Mr. Sig, Mr. Lang, and they said there was a thing online because they're computer guys. And uh, they said they had this thing called virtual races or from an organization, virtual strides or striders. And, um, and with that, you can help, and we help the Hurricane Relief Fund. I heard that you guys also um, raised money for the 2017 Hurricane Relief. Is that true? <laughs> yep, that's yeah. true. Yes, my. That's really cool. Uh, it was kind of energized and, and we, I didn't expect like everybody else to be, I didn't expect we were supposed to be doing a half marathon really. I really, I was surprised at first that we're doing a half marathon and one, like we were all doing our best to do what dude has said. I mean, we have, like we normally do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how did it make you feel that you guys accomplished a half marathon over the semester? It felt good. It felt good. Did you like running like every yeah. Wednesday, every week? Yeah. Did you like running a mile every yeah. week? Yes, I oh. run more fast. No? no? Was it tiring? A little bit. So did you guys find it like tiring every week to be running a mile? Like did you like that? It was worth it. I mean, we were running around in a big circle. That was really exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> but we had to run around really and around good. and around nine times. It's just really exhausting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it can really put you to sleep. <laughs> I talked to my mom about it over the holidays, and she said, that's a great idea. I'll sponsor all the 10 kids. And uh, so what I did is I took their uh, 13 miles uh, for a half marathon, sent that into the, uh, the organization, and um, they sent us back the, the medals and uh, these bracelets and uh, their racing bibs and uh, presented them to the kids today for their effort. And they just, well, they loved it. 2016. Well, the point is we were, su I was a bit surprised that that dude has showed us this stuff and I can't believe his mother came and put, I can't believe dude has told his mother to give, that he told us about our times and everything. Yeah. And that was like a surprise to me. I never expected dude has to tell anybody about that. Really. That's really awesome. So what was it like to see these kids accomplish something like that? It was, it was unbelievable because they just went beyond my expectations. To see them, um, like I said, back squat and to bench, the biggest thing was to see them on the agility ladders. Oh my goodness. To do the high knees and to do grapevine. We, we called it hopscotch. We did the bunny hop. It just it was unbelievable that they just bought into it and uh, and they got in better shape. Because I'm really happy that, that, that they're donating the money to other people who, have, who suffer from a tornado disaster. It's a really big deal. I mean, I love it the way people give to other people. I mean, that's what I want to, sometimes I want to see that in more people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, Yanni, very cool to see that. Um, and also very cool that all the proceeds they raised through that went to support hurricane relief because, you know, there was some pretty devastating hurricanes that happened last year. And great to see um, some Gettysburg students supporting that as well. Awesome things done by awesome students. We also have some students who deserve some recognition in Catherine Wagner, Bailey Hahn, Brianna Arntz, and Abby Sense, who, Jared, earned their Keystone degree for wow. their FFA. That is very awesome. Cool. Congratulations, guys. Well done. All right, and Yanni, now, we, uh, we've done a lot of different segments on the show. We've had cooking with Creel. Some good, some bad. Yes, we've had, we've had coffee with the crew. We've done a lot of different things. But now, we have uh, a new segment on the show called Are You Smarter Than Sondheimer? Now, this is, this, is the, this is the pitch, Yanni. We place a Gettysburg student, this episode, Jacob Sisney. Good and choice. And we face them against Mr. Sondheimer in a trivia battle to see who is uh, smarter in this, in this trivia game we've created. So let's throw it over to our new segment, Are You Smarter Than Sondheimer? Welcome to Are You Smarter Than Sondheimer, the Warrior Wire game show where we pit your Gettysburg Area High School students against none other than uh, teacher, Mr. Sondheimer. All right, so let's introduce today's contestants. First up, we have Jacob Sisney, um, or the Vern, as you uh, yeah. prefer to be called. He's a senior here, correct? Correct. All right, thanks for coming down to the show. Thank you for having me here. All right, and on the other end, we have Mr. Sondheimer, a graduate of Gettysburg Area High School and a teacher here for 25 years. Let's give them a hand, shall we? <laughs> All right, first up, we have round one. Round one, we, the, each contestant will be asked eight questions. Um, they will write down their answers on the whiteboard, and they will not reveal the answers until we tell them. These questions come from a variety of categories. All right, competitors, are you ready? All right, let's begin. Round one, question one. In what year was the first Harry Potter film released? 1999. Mr. Sondheimer. 2001? Seven. 2007. The correct answer was 2001, so n neither competitor got that correct. The score remains 0-0. Zero, zero. Um, question two. The term déjà vu comes from what language? French, Mr. Sondheimer? Friends, both are correct. Both competitors are on the board, one to one. All right, question number three. As a protest to Hollywood's portrayal of Native Americans in film, Marlon Brando declined the Academy Award for his performance in what movie? The Godfather, Mr. Sondheimer? Godfather, both are correct, two to two. All right, in 2009, Taylor Swift's acceptance speech at the Video Music Awards was interrupted by what other artist? Kanye West, Mr. Sondheimer. Kanye West, the best. Both are correct. The answer is Kanye West. Our competitors are tied three to three. All right, question number five. How many people have walked on the moon? 18, Mr. Sondheimer. 20? Both are incorrect. The correct the answer was 12. 12 people have walked on the moon. Question number six. Who serves as the 37th president of the United States? George H.W. Bush, Mr. Sondheimer, Johnson, that is both incorrect. The answer is Richard Nixon. Richard Nixon was the 37th president of the United States. <laughs> All right. Doing me or Nixon? <laughs> All right, number seven. How many United U.S. states border the Pacific Ocean? Four, Mr. Sondheimer. Three, the correct answer is five. California, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, and Hawaii. All right, sorry, we got you there. All right, number eight, the final question this round. The U.S. state of Georgia is famous for producing what fruit? Peaches, Mr. Sondheimer, peaches, both are correct. And that brings our score total four to four. Tied going into round two, all right. So since Jacob is the, uh, the guest contestant here, we're going to have him spin first. 
Geography. All right. So geography. Here's how round two works. Each contestant will be given uh, three questions in their category that they spin. Um, each question will be worth two points unless they go to multiple choice, in which they will both be worth one point. All right. So Jacob, first question in geography. Originally a Viking fishing village, Copenhagen became the capital of what country? Right, say it or right? Just say it. Uh, can I have multiple choice? Yes, you can. Would that be Iceland? Denmark or Switzerland? Iceland. That is incorrect. The correct answer was Denmark. All right. Question number two. What is the name for the natural boundary that separates the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean? North America. That is incorrect. The correct answer was the Great Divide or the Continental Divide. All right. Question number three. The final question of round two. St. Lawrence River forms a partial border between what two countries? All right, you have the United States and Canada, the United States and Mexico, or Brazil and Peru. United States and Mexico. It's incorrect. The correct answer is the United States and Canada. All right, so still four to four. Mr. Sontimer's turn to space for Mr. Sontimer. Three questions in the category of space. What is the closest galaxy to the Milky Way? Galaxy, the Milky Way? The Milky Way Galaxy. Which yeah. is space. Um, may I have multiple choice? You may. Would that be the Coruscant Galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy, or the Andorian Galaxy? Andromeda. Andromeda is correct for one point. Mr. Stan Tamer takes the lead. Five to four. All right, question number two. What is the most common element found in the sun? Hydrogen. That is correct for two points. All right, Mr. Sontimer, taking, taking the lead by three points, I believe. All right, question number three. How many moons does Venus have? Multiple choice, please. Would it be two moons, one moon, or zero moons? One. That is incorrect. The correct answer was zero. Mr. Sontimer is taking a seven to four lead um, over Jacob, which brings us to round number three. Round number three, here's how it works. It's the wager round. Contestants are able to wager as many points as they have currently on the board. Again, Mr. Sontimer with seven, Jacob with four. Round number three. What did the famous Hollywood sign in Los Angeles, California originally say? Reveal your answer. You wagered one point and wrote Hollywood Hills. Mr. Sontimer. One point and Holly World. Both are incorrect. It originally said Hollywood Land. But considering Mr. Sontimer and Jacob both wagered one point, that brings our final score to six to three. And Mr. Sontimer is the winner of today's contest. Let's give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. All right, thank you all for tuning in. We'll see uh, who Mr. Sontimer will take on next time on Are You Smarter Than Sontimer? All right, so that is all that we have this week, Yanni. Very fun show. So signing off, I'm Jared Herr. And I'm Yanni Tasso. Thanks for watching The Warrior Wire. Thank you.